welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm here with the beloved, <laughs> the one and only Toots. And I'm Paul, and uh, we are having fun sharing some things with you guys today. And I wanted to uh, talk about something that's been kind of... Uh, anyway, you guys know that all the drama that's going on in the world and everything that everyone's talking about... As this one guy said, it's the talk of the town, and everybody wants to talk about it. I don't. You know, even my loving father, when, even when speaking with anyone, he's like, I don't want to discuss religion, and I don't want to discuss politics. And I was like, yeah, it seems like you can't even talk about anything with anyone without having to debate and fight and argue, and it just turns so, everyone has an opinion, and you've heard that, you, you know, opinions are like, uh, anyway, <laughs> they stink. Fears they all stink. Numbers. Yeah, let's go into Increases. what the word says. This jumped out at me, and I don't like to quote Bibles, blah, blah, blah. Let's quote some scriptures. You got to live the word. You can't just quote the Bible. The Bible is not meant to be quoted. The Bible is meant to be believed, received. And you just live it, okay? But uh, I really like Philippians 4, 8. Because there's so much that we uh, go through in life, and I try to keep my heart in rest and in peace at all times. So when that peace is violated, and I'm getting frustrated or angry or arguing with somebody about something, something's amiss. That's not normal for me. I don't like being flustered or frustrated or angry at anything or anybody. That's the way of the dark side. <laughs> I like to walk by the force of a born-again nature, born-again spirit. And... Something interesting that I just uh, noticed, that even if I try to keep my heart pure, and my mind stayed on God, and everything is good, and everybody else wants to take me off of it and talk about everything else, that's not, it just doesn't make sense. I'm like, why would you even want to talk about it? And if you only talk about Christ and God, then everybody gets really bothered by it. Like, can we talk about something else? Because I don't like talking about religion. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus that's going to change your life. I mean, I'm talking about the lover of my soul. Well, I love God too. Let's talk about the person you love. No, thanks. Yeah, because you don't even know him. Get to know him and that's all you want to talk about. The person who you love so much you can't stop talking about. Can't stop talking about my wife wherever I go, you know, because I love her and I miss her when I'm not with her. So, uh, when you love something... Here's what Philippians 4.8 tells you to do. Finally, brothers, whatsoever, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue in it, if there's any praise, think on these things. If this is what the Bible teaches us to think on, what are you thinking about? Where does your mind go when it's on neutral, when it daydreams, when it drifts? Where does it go? Does it think about food? Does it think about pleasures? Does it think about entertainment? Does it think about nothing and then you just get on your phone? My friend was like, uh, I had to give my phone to my sister and she held it on, held on to it in her room while I was in my room just praying and seeking God because it was just so distracting. I, well, I'm just going to look up a Bible verse, so I'm just going to look up this. Next thing you know, you're looking something else and someone's messaging you. And it's a life and death emergency, seems like, every time. And you, you're you just so distracted. I'm trying to talk to people, and as, as they're talking to me, they'll just look on their phone and start scanning through Facebook. I'm like, we're having a conversation. You can stop scanning that. You know, we're talking here. And it's, it's very strange, the time and place we live in. It's like... We need to, like, throw our phones at the door when we walk in and just enjoy one another. But anytime we would talk, I would try to keep my mind on what's ever pure, honest, just, lovely, good report. I try to focus on that, but everybody else would try to get me to think on something else. And God spoke to me and says, son, if people are talking to you about anything else that I have not said to you, just dismiss it utterly like it's from the enemy. I was like, wow. So I'd walk in the house and, and someone's like, hey, do you know so-and-so and the world's coming to an end and we need to stock up on food and guns? And I was like, you got so much weight on you, you've stocked up at least two, three months on food. You, you can fast and you, you'd be all right. <laughs> People are stocked up plenty. 
And I'm like, why are you telling me this? I said, I'm, I'm going to dismiss this. Well, could it be the Lord who came from a few prophets and, and, and the prophets prophesied this? And it's like, we're prophesying horse races. We're prophesying elections. We're prophesying everything but the word of God. It's very strange, the time we live in. And the beauty that I've seen is, you know what? I'm going to dismiss it because the Father doesn't mention that to me. And this isn't pure, just, lovely, good report. There's no virtue in this. There's, there's nothing to think on. I don't want to think on that and let that in. Uh, anything you'd like to add to this? Mm. It also just helps whatever you're feeding, you know? Mm. Whatever you're around, what you're reading, what you're watching, what your eyes are looking at. I mean, it's as simple as sometimes I used to be really into exercise and the right foods and all these things and I'd get in the, the line at the grocery store and all those magazines are just like whoa you want to see that and read that and then this celebrity and it's just probably mostly lies especially if it's gossip and I just feel like just don't even look there Noel it's just taking you places that aren't even and if you do I'm like I'm just gonna pray for that girl or I'm just gonna pray for that situation because it's so easy to, I mean, this is how powerful images are. I used to worship in my apartment and I had YouTube that wasn't a subscription and I'd get ads. So you're like in the middle of like, oh, this amazing moment. You're so fixed. You're so with God. And then boom, something about this medicine will help you if you have this problem and this disease. and Or, or it'd be like, here's a preview to this sexual show and it literally is for like three seconds but i'm like i have to wait and then beep to you know go to turn it off and i remember that happened to me one time and that night i remember i woke up in the middle of the night and that exact image that played for three seconds boom was right in my head and i was like wow that's powerful so you think even a commercial your eyes are seeing it you're hearing it it was really resonating so I just urge and encourage you to really pay attention to what your eyes, your ears, your attention is focused on because it's powerful. But it's, it's a counterfeit, which means there's a true and there's a real. So if the, the enemy is only counterfeiting the pure true, then there's something that you can meditate, you can listen to, that actually is more powerful than that lie. And that's what Paul's talking about. So the answer is love Jesus and make sure you're paying your monthly subscription to YouTube so you get no ads. <laughs> That's the answer. Here's Psalms 1 for you. I got a couple places I want to read. But, you know, you need your daily verse of the day. So here's a couple verses. Blessed is the man, <laughs> a man and a woman, <laughs> that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in God's word. And in God's word, you meditate day and night. Now that's something you meditate during the day, and that's what you'll meditate during the night. And explain how. How the meditation process works? Well, Whatever you give yourself to the most is what you eventually become. So when you focus on something over and over and over and over, it becomes habit. It becomes a part of you. It builds something in your heart and your mind to where that becomes more real than anything else. So if you have some lies, if some defeats, some insecurities and worries, when you're reading God's word that speaks truth and these non-truths that you've been believing, they start getting dismissed. I don't... Oh man, I had some good quotes that I was just sharing. I, I don't give it any thought. I try not to meditate on these things. Because if I think on failure, and if I think on defeat, and if I think on weaknesses, that's what you end up feeding. You know, that one guy mentioned, well, I got two wolves within me fighting. Which one's going to win? And he says, well, the one you feed. So if you're constantly feeding that weakness, that's what takes you out. But if you meditate day and night which no one's saying stay up all night and read and never sleep. It's just whatever you do at night, it's still working something within you. And you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Your leaf will not wither, 
and whatsoever you do, you shall prosper. And someone told me, well, you'll go through challenges, and life is going to be hard and difficulties. I said, oh, sure, sure, but guess what? My leaf won't wither, and I'm planted by the rivers, and I'm constantly going to be fed, because that's where my nourishment comes from, his word. So, you want to share something? Yeah, I mean, I was just reading Hebrews this morning, 5 and 6, but the end of 5 says, so about those who are children and they needed milk, you know, the word of God, just feasting on it. It's giving his word, be strong. For everyone that uses milk, they're still, they're still unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And that word use, I looked it up this morning, he reminded me. It means a habit, whether of the body or the mind, something that's practiced. So those who are of strong meat, to them be that they who are of full age, those who are mature, who by reason of their habit, their use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. It's like I have been around my husband so much that I can tell the difference between him and somebody else who calls and says, Hi, this is your husband, Paul. I'm like, no, that's not. I know my husband, Paul. You are not my husband. My senses are so exercised. I know him. I know his voice. I know his character. I know his nature that I cannot be fooled by the evil or something that's a counterfeit. Just thought I'd share that. Yeah. Here's another one for you guys. With all this turmoil and all this drama and all this stuff, ain't nobody got time for that. If you're a believer and you want to pray about something, let me know. I'll agree and pray with you. And we'll 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 contend for that. But don't tell me this drama. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about what's going on and someone's like you have to care about politics you just have to and if you don't care and you don't then I don't even want to talk to you don't talk to me I don't want to hear it my ears are not trash cans and I don't want to hear all that trash the Bible tells us to pray believers the Bible tells us to believe his word that is how we work the works of God so let's believe his word and here I want to close out with this and this is Isaiah for those who want to look it up Isaiah 26 Verse 3, and you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on Jesus because he trusts in you. Can you end with an example? When you give your heart and your mind and you focus and center it on Christ, whenever my mind is so flustered, and the only reason it is that way is because I took it off of Christ, his word, and I'm not meditating it. I'm not meditating on Philippians, which is just good and lovely things. Whenever I get my mind and I start thinking on all the garbage of the day and everything everyone's telling you, which is they think it's based off of truth, but man, there's so much junk out there. There's so much lies and I almost sound like a grandpa, but whenever I focus on God's word, that is when everything else just comes alive. That's when I can see through it because his, his word is the light unto your path his words and everything he says and everything is very bright and there's no darkness in it he will expose everything that needs to get exposed through his word and you are his word made manifest in the earth so just keep loving him standing on his word and keeping your mind on him that's to keep you in perfect peace so i love you guys i bless you guys thanks for hanging out with us and toots and i love you so much we pray for you guys so Let's pray for them real quick. Father, those uh, who are watching and listening, Father, we come in agreement, and I thank you for just setting a watch on their lips and even on their mind to just keep such a purity, such a stillness on your words and on the things you're saying. Father, I thank you for exposing anything that's been coming in and trying to lead them away off of what you've been telling them and where you've been guiding them. So, Father, I thank you for giving them the wisdom and the boldness to follow you, obey you, and achieve, you know, your plan for them, the best that you have for them. Help them see you. Help them get there. Help them rest in you and trust you. Father, we bless them right now in Jesus' name.
We love you guys. We miss you guys. We thank you so much for hanging out with us. And we'll see you guys again next time.